Hi everyone, welcome to another Tech Nerd tutorial. Today we're going to be installing WordPress on our Ubuntu server. So here we are in the WordPress.org site. We need to be here and not the .com because the .org is where we can create our own WordPress site. So it is a web software which allows us to create a website or blog and there are plugins and themes that allow us to make the website building easier. If we scroll down we're going to find their own personal blog where we get updates and instructions to install which we're not going to worry about. Now we need a LAMP server on our Ubuntu computer before we can install WordPress. If you've been following along with this series, you already have one installed when we installed OwnCloud. However, if this is your first time listening to these videos, we're going to go ahead and go through the instructions step by step, starting with installing the LAMP server. To install a LAMP server, we need to open up Terminal, and in Terminal, we need to install something called task cell. So we type in sudo apt-get install task t-a-s-k cell s-e-l all in one word. This will allow us to then install server components without having to install them individually. So we'll go ahead and hit enter and then we would input in our password. It's then going to install this. We just need to hit enter to confirm and once this is installed we can then go ahead and open task cell by typing sudo task cell. Once we do, we're going to get this pop up and we can mouse down with our arrows to the LAMP server, hit spacebar, and then hit enter for it to install the LAMP server. It's going to go ahead and do its install. And partway through, it's going to ask for a password for the MySQL root user. It's like the admin. So we're going to type in a password and then we are going to confirm that password then it's going to continue and finish up. As it's finishing, a few things to note that this is going to be just using the default and this is a simplified version of the install. If you have to worry about security or other additional concerns, then you want to research this a little bit more. So we've gone ahead and we have installed our lab server and now we're ready to go and install WordPress. So now to install WordPress, we want to click on the download WordPress and we can go ahead and click download on the download WordPress button. We can open this in the archive extractor. We can click on the WordPress folder and in that folder, we can then go ahead and extract it to another folder. I'm just going to use home because this is a temporary location. From there, I'm just going to show the files in the home folder so you can see them. So here they are, you can see WordPress. I'm going to go ahead and close the file explorer and close the archive manager. I do need to go back to terminal. In terminal, I'm just going to show you that I'm in the location of my home. You can see WordPress, the very far corner. And from here, there are two things I have to do. I must first move it to the web server location and then give it ownership. So the first command that you see on the screen is going to move the WordPress folder to the web server. Once we do that, then it is no longer here. It's at that location. And then the next one that you see on the screen is going to be giving the ownership to the Apache web server. So there's a specific account that will allow that be to be visible. So we're going to go ahead and type that in and then our web server is now ready to go with WordPress. From there, if you haven't watched the video to create a dynamic DNS, or if you don't have one set up, please go ahead and check out the video that is on your screen to get caught up just because it takes too long to include that component in this video. And once you have a web address, you can come here and continue seeing the next part of the installation. Now in a new tab, we can go ahead and type in our dynamic DNS, but we want to append on WordPress at the end, so forward slash WordPress. That's going to get us to this page where we can choose our language. And then as we scroll down, we can go ahead and hit continue. It's going to ask for a database. Now we haven't created a database, but we did create a username and password in the install. So before we move forward, 
we need to go ahead and create that database in the MySQL. So the default database name it's going to use is WordPress. So we'll just go ahead and make that before we continue filling out this page. So to go into MySQL, we need to go back to terminal and be able to log in. So back in terminal, what we need to type in is the command to be able to log in to MySQL. So we're going to see that on the screen and we are just going to use the default root password. This is not the greatest security, but for simplicity's sake, we're just going to use the default password that we created when we were first installing MySQL. Now that we're in MySQL and we'll be able to see that our uh, cursor indicator is beside MySQL, we need to create database and give it the name, the default name we're going to use is WordPress. So create database WordPress semicolon. Hit enter, then we can go ahead and exit MySQL. So with that database created, we don't need to change that name. We just need to put that our username is root and the password is the password that we put into when we first installed MySQL at the beginning of this video. We go ahead and hit submit. Then it's going to go ahead and ask us to run the install. We're going to let it run the install. And then it's going to ask for some additional information like what title we want to give our WordPress site, a username and a password and its email address. So the site title, I'm just going to give it a sample title. So tech nerd services sample site. And the username, you want something other than admin because admin tends to be the default. So I'm going to go ahead and put Mike and then I'm going to go ahead and put my password in twice. It's then going to ask for my email address. So I'll go ahead and put that in. And then at the very bottom, it's going to then ask for me to uh, install WordPress. I am deselecting allowing search engines to index this because this is a test site. But if you want your site found on things like Google, you do want to leave that checked off. It says success. I can now go ahead and log in with the username and password that I created. Hit the login button and it's going to go ahead and get me to the WordPress dashboard. I can go ahead and click on my name in the header and there I am. I see my WordPress site. Now in the future, we may do some tutorials on what plugins or ways of setting up this WordPress site, but now you have a WordPress site to be able to blog or create web pages for yourself and for others. Hi everyone. Thanks again for watching this video. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any additional questions or comments. Furthermore, check out some of our related videos or find us in our social media. If you would like email notifications of whenever we release new video or written tutorials, you can go to our webpage technerdservices.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter. We will send to your inbox notifications of those new video and tutorials. Thanks again for watching and until next time, keep teching on.